Hi guys, thanks for coming to check out this video. I've been investigating New Zealand this month and I've been absolutely loving it. And now to round out the series for New Zealand, I thought I would do a digital piece, a portrait of Taika Waititi. So this, if you haven't seen, is a new series that I've started where I am basically learning and teaching myself how to draw digitally. So I'm just using a pen and tablet, which I was given a few months ago and I've only had a little bit of practice on it so far. I showed you guys my full piece that I did a couple of weeks ago of a girl, like a portrait, um, all using this Cintiq and I had so much fun with it. So I was really excited to do another one inspired by New Zealand. Um, so I knew I wanted to do a portrait and there was somebody that I really wanted to explore in my bullet journal, but I didn't really know how to include him throughout it. So I thought I would save this to do a proper portrait of and why not practice digital? So uh, I think he's got such an interesting face. If you're not sure who Taika Waititi is, he's an actor, director, producer from New Zealand and I just really love his stuff. So a couple of his movies, if you're not familiar, are Thor. So he directed and produced that, but he also acted as one of the funniest characters in it called Korg, uh, which was basically a giant pile of rocks. And I won't go into like his lines, but they're just hilarious. I found a video that actually links all the funniest lines from Korg, which I'll put in the description box if you want to check it out. It's just really, really funny. And he's also done a movie called What We Do in the Shadows. And I first saw this from a friend recommending me the series and the movie. And I went ahead and watched the series because it was you know, easily um, attainable for me at the time. Loved the series. Then when I was researching Taika, I had no idea that he actually wrote the entire thing. So that was pretty cool. And he also wrote it with Jermaine Clement, who is, I did mention in the bullet journals, is also another favorite of mine. Um, I love the show Flight of the Concords. I just think it's hilarious. I really find Kiwis funny, like super funny. And that show in particular just made me laugh all the time. Um, so yeah, I did watch um, the movie version, which is the original done in 2014, Rick, written by Taika and he acts in it as well. And it's really funny. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend it. A little bit quirky because it's a mockumentary about vampires living in, you know, living amongst us and they're living in Wellington. Um, so yeah, I definitely rate that and I just love his stuff. Um, Jojo Rabbit, he did Jojo Rabbit, he, he played Hitler in it, um, but also wrote the story and directed it. So very talented guy, this guy. So I just was so glad that I could get to showcase him in some way when thinking about New Zealand. So what have I been learning with digital art so far? I and picking it up as I go and I'm watching quite a bit on YouTube of other people doing this and you always think you pick up something when you're watching them but it's not until you actually get doing it that you find you know you just find a natural way that you do it so I'm trying to copy people who have been doing it a long time trying to remember what they're doing but then when I get onto it I forget everything it's insane I don't know if I'm aging or it's just you know, it just doesn't come naturally to me to watch someone else's and then do the same. So yeah, I've really just been feeling it out and just trying my best. But someone did suggest for me to use a um, mid-tone as my background instead of working straight on the white. And so I thought I'd try that and it definitely helped. I really liked how it creates this base tone everywhere. And then I could build my base sketch on top of that. And you probably saw me, you know, moving the facial features around a bit, which is so handy on digital. That's something that I'm loving because there's just this, there's this error that it doesn't matter because you're not going to erase away the page and be left with like, you know, an indented piece of paper that can't take the watercolor properly. Or, you know, there's lines that you have to fill with a colored pencil from your pressure of the pencil lines being rubbed out and rubbed out. So love that you can actually fix your mistakes quite easily. Um, yeah, really enjoy that. So although I've been watching a lot of digital art online, I'm definitely watching something that is not as realistic as mine always tend to turn out. I'm watching more animated, which I absolutely love, and I'm hoping that I can develop that way in the future. Um, but I think it's probably good to start with a bit of realism anyway to understand 
the system and the process and you know try and develop your same art style that you use on paper onto digital format so it's kind of like a good transitional element I just think it's really handy to learn that first and then I can hopefully you know bring it back and try and leave out parts and stylize it a little bit more so after i worked on my base sketch layer i then added additional layers on top and just focused in on little portions of the face to try and perfect those so i think i had my layers labeled as like eye um, ear nose those things and then just focused on those little parts and trying to build as much um, depth in those as I could and obviously I'm going zooming right in and using the finest um, tip I can to get those that clarity um, one thing I do want to explore though is hair and beard beard was tricky and even even still in the end the beard I find it almost looks blurry when you're zoomed out like when you're zoomed in I actually used like a beard brush it was like a little stubble brush and it worked great on when I was close up. But then when you sort of come back and take a look from a distance, which is ideally the view you want with digital art, um, I found it looked a little bit blurry and I kept kind of squinting my eyes thinking, oh, is it is it blurry or not? So there's definitely an art to getting some stubble looking real. So I'll have to check that out. <laughs> Luckily, I don't do stubble that much because I tend to draw women anyway. Um, but yeah, so that, that was something that I found a little bit tricky. As for the brushes, the ones I tend to use are like a soft round brush for majority of the skin and the background and sort of any areas of shading. And then I will, I actually found this really cool brush called the pore brush. Um, and that is awesome because it actually puts pores onto the skin, which I think if you're trying to do realistic um, faces, it's ideal to get some of that texture on there. So I think that was probably my favorite find. And then another tip that if, if you're doing this at home and you're not quite sure, you know, if you're learning just like me, there's something that I did come across that has helped me immensely. So it's, you lock the transparent pixels on your layer, which you can find at the top of the layers. One of those little buttons is the lock layer, or you can just right click and lock transparent pixels. Um, but doing that means that if you've got a solid color in there, um, like for example, that neck shading that I did, I had that as one layer. And then when I lock the transparent pixels, it means I can add whatever I like and it's never gonna go outside of that shape I'd already made. So it just makes it so much easier when you've done, you've already got your flat layer for the skin tone and you wanna add in some sharp shadows around the edge. If you lock it, then it's not gonna, not gonna be reliant on you trying to trace around the line or even trying to select that area. You know, I, I hate selecting things um, when you're working like on something like this because it just takes forever. It's organic and it just takes forever. So I was so happy to find that little trick and I used it a lot in this piece, so that was great. I do love to include a background element in these, in these digital pieces um, and sometimes in my portraits as well. And just by putting a shape behind, I think it just adds a little bit of interest. And then to finish the piece up, I decided that I should add like a rim light. I've been seeing a lot of people doing rim lighting on their animated characters. And I thought, oh, I wonder what it would look like on a realistic character. So I've thrown in like a blue rim light down the left side of his face. Actually, it's his right. <laughs> and then my Taika Waititi image was finished. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys next week for my Finland themed bullet journal setup. Super excited. See you then. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.